What up, YouTube? Today is the day we figure out what happened that day. Yes, that day when this host decided to go boom. So today we're gonna pretty much figure out if the head gasket is blown. Um, that's the most important thing right now. Uh, but we're gonna also be able to uh, see if possibly the head is lifting under boost. As you saw in the video, um, it was at a pretty high miles per hour. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll go ahead and put a link right here. So you can go ahead and take a look at that because um, it's, it's a pretty good video. Uh, everything was going good and then it didn't. So uh, today we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna perform a compression test first. Go ahead and make sure the motor still has this compression. Uh, I know when I first got the motor built and to the last time I checked it, I think at the beginning of this year, it has, has 180 on each cylinder. Um, so we're gonna check that and then we also gonna perform a leak down test. It can tell you pretty much where your problem is. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. All right, so the things you would need, the two common things, the things you have to have to do a compressor test on any vehicle is spark plug socket to be able to remove the spark plugs. In my case, it's a 5.8 spark plug socket. You go ahead and use this to remove your spark plugs into each individual cylinder. And then, of course, you would need a compression tester. You can get these at any auto parts store or you can get them online on Amazon or eBay. All right, guys, let's dig in. Let's see what happened to this vehicle that day. I haven't touched it since then. Yes, 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 the coolant is still everywhere. But planning on taking it all apart anyways to clean it. Because, yeah, this is going to be a nightmare. Alrighty, let's get some light. This light here that I have is brand is Monster. And I have to say, it's a pretty darn good light. Um, you can hook it up to your hood and be hands free. You don't have to sit here and hold a light the whole time. And there she blows. And the coolant, I can see puddles and still places. All right, so it wipes off my billet stuff pretty easy. Blow out, uh, blow off file still cover. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna need a good detail, but before I start cleaning it, let me let me make sure I ain't gotta take it all apart. It sucks to clean it and then have to take it apart. So we're gonna start with the compression test first. Let's get that knocked out. Okay, so on most vehicles, you're gonna open the hood, obviously, and you're gonna see your four cylinder, your V8, whichever configuration it is, or your V6. In my case, I have this little, small, little, tiny powerhouse here, this four cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cover so I can be able to access the coils uh, and then access the part spark plugs. First thing first, let's move the cover. I usually use a magnetic tray to put all my bolts and nuts in. It's a lot easier to organize and maintain. You can pick up any of these things, sometimes for free at Harbor Freight. They always have deals and stuff. And I put them all right there. So you can have it in a car somewhere, like right there. My strut bar makes a perfect platform to put everything in. And like it is, it's magnetic. Nothing will just fall off unless it's not magnetic. So pull this cover off. And there are my ignition coils. All right, let's go ahead and get these guys off. Let's see what we got. And you can see coolant all under here, man. When that hers burst, it burst under high RPMs. Put it down in the hole. And. Oh. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! Oh. Huh. Okay, so. I can't tell if that was because I just took it out because all the coolant came in. Oh, that cylinder's filled with coolant. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and spray these guys out real quick to make sure that's not the case. Cause I would think if it had that much coolant going down in there, look at here. 
I wouldn't have made it back that day and it wouldn't have ran as good as it did. So let's go ahead and do that. Get these blowed out. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have a compressor. Uh, thank you, Sarah, again. All right, let's take the next one out. Hopefully it doesn't have coolant like that. All right, that one's dry. <laughs> That one looks a little wet. Back to the gas station or when I had it running. That one was, is dry. All right, so all four spark plugs are removed. All right, so then you wanna get your compression tester. I'm gonna start at number one and walk around. What I like to do, start number one and I write down the specifications that I get the first time and then I make a second pass. So screw that guy on down in there. It has threads on the end, and then clamp your gauge on. And we ready to compression test cylinder one. The magic number we want to see is 180, 180, 180. So the way I perform my compressor test is, I crank the motor over 10 times, and I hold my foot down on the throttle. Turn off all the unnecessary power items. That way you don't take away from the battery starting the motor. So, put my foot down and 10 times. All right, let's go check it out. Number one says 185. That is my normal compression what I've been seeing on this motor since I've had it. So that cylinder is not leaking, at least under compression. Press this button here, bleed it out. Plug it up. Number two says, oh, a little less, 180. 180 is fine. Uh, number one is just a little bit stronger, which is okay. And a good thing it is holding it while I'm talking. The fact that it's holding compression while I'm talking to you, also a good sign. So in my case, we're 50% done. <laughs> and that's for leaving, but anything can happen. Remember, the one that was the most wet, I don't know if the coolant fell in when I took out the spark plug, but that guy there had a lot of coolant in it. I would think it had been smoking as I was driving, and it was not. All right, number three. Number three. This thing sounds healthy. You, it, I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but it's going choo choo, choo choo, choo choo. Definitely doesn't sound down. This one's 180. 180. All right. All right. Not bad. Three down. One more to go, 180 PSI on number three. Hose still soft, don't feel like it's getting compression. And then I'm gonna open this guy and see if it's still full. Cause I did drive 50 miles here and the poor guy is still there. <laughs> I did drive 50 miles here. So if this is still full, that means coolant didn't get lost. Clip it. This one's nervous, cause this is the one that had the, the fluid in it. Whoa, something ain't right there. Let's retest that one. It could be because it was full of coolant, which is weird because it should have blew out by now. But it's saying that cylinder there just did 215. That is concerning. Don't know why, but let's redo that one. So we got one, 185, 190, 195, 200. That was definitely pumping out some compression. Hmm. 
Let's do it one more time, one more time, one more time. Do it one more time. I would think that stuff would have blew out. See, hopefully it drops down some more. If it dropped down, it could be because I think it did drop down to 195. So it could be the coolant that came down in that cylinder. Cause now I'm at 180, 185, 190. So it is dropping down. So I'm gonna chop that up to some coolant falling down into that cylinder and it possibly didn't blow it all out. But it is dropping down. So that's positive to me. The compression is dropping down every time I do it over and over and over. Um, I'm pretty sure it's because when I initially took that spark plug out, coolant um, went down into that spark plug. A lot of people like to add oil to the motor to see if it raised the compression, if they believe they have a ring problem, maybe that's what's happening here. Since it has some fluid in that cylinder, it could be jacked it up a little bit. And that's why it's going lower and lower and lower every time I uh, do a test on that cylinder. Um, I really do believe that's the reason. I'm happy that it's not low though. Um, if it was low to 160, 150, then I know I have a head gasket problem under just normal. So I'm pretty happy with the compressor test. Even though that one cylinder was higher, I do believe it was because the coolant went down into that cylinder. Um, three years and this car has seen a lot of action. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's not low to show something's leaking, it's high uh, to show something is um, being sealed. So I think the extra seal is the coolant that went down into that cylinder and that's why that coolant, um, that the PSI, keeps going lower and lower and lower every time I, I turn it over. Cause quite a bit went down into that cylinder. Um, I can see it puddling up on the piston. So let's move on to the leak down test.